Before we start today's episode, I want to recommend another amazing podcast to all of you listening. Simple English News Daily is a daily summary of the most important news happening around the world every day. And the best part? It's recorded in intermediate English. If you're interested in the news, current affairs and improving your English listening skills, I really recommend listening to Simple English News Daily. It's a great way to stay up to date with the world news while also practicing English. And it is just seven minutes long, uploaded every weekday, Monday to Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, you will have podcasts to listen to. You can find a link to Simple English News Daily in the description or it is available on all podcasting apps. Thanks to Simple English News Daily for supporting this episode. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. The United States has 50 states and today I want to discuss why and how Hawaii became the most recent to join the Union, an island chain in the Pacific far from the contiguous United States. The story of how Hawaii became American is fascinating and controversial. You can find the full transcript to today's episode for free over on the Thinking in English blog. The link is in the description. And here is today's vocabulary list. State. State. A part of a large country with its own government such as in Germany, Australia or the US. For example, Alaska is the largest state in the United States. Contiguous, contiguous. Next to or touching another, usually similar thing. For instance, the two states are contiguous to each other, but the laws are quite different. Expansion, expansion. The act of becoming larger or more extensive. For example, the expansion of the city is much needed. Acquisition. Acquisition. Something that someone buys or gets, often to add to a collection of things. For example, the museum's latest acquisition is a $4 million sculpture. Plantation. Plantation. A large farm, especially in a hot part of the world, on which a particular type of crop is grown. As in, the community now run their own coffee plantation. To annex. To annex. To take possession of an area of land or a country, usually by force or without permission. For instance, the UK annexed this small island west of Scotland in 1955. Restoration. Restoration. The act or process of returning something to its earlier good condition or position or to its owner. As in, a large majority of the population is demanding the restoration of the former government. Territory. Territory especially in countries like Australia, Canada and the United States, a large area that has some local government but fewer rights than a province or a state. For instance, Puerto Rico is an island in the Caribbean Sea that has been a territory of the United States since 1898. When you imagine the United States of America, what do you see? What is the iconic image in your mind? Is it the giant skyscrapers of New York City? The Hollywood sign in the California sun? The bright lights of Las Vegas? The giant Grand Canyon? The Great Lakes of the North? The plains of the Midwest? The swamps of Florida? The deserts of New Mexico? From the east coast to the west coast of the United States, there are 48 states with unique landscapes, communities, histories and cultures. Now, you might be thinking, 
48 states. There are 50 states. What is Tom talking about? And you'd be right. Of course, there are 50 states that make up the United States. However, the contiguous United States from the East Coast to the West Coast contain 48 states. The other two, Alaska and Hawaii, are not attached to the mainland of the country. You'd be forgiven for forgetting these states. After all, when you look at a map of the country, Alaska and Hawaii have their own special place because they don't fit in the normal scale. And the story of how these states, especially Hawaii, became part of the US is fascinating and a little controversial. Before we talk about that, let's briefly recap the growth of the United States of America. The initial 13 states were established through the American Revolution and the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Over the next few years, the Articles of Confederation were adopted, forming a loose union of states. However, recognising the need for a stronger central government, the Founding Fathers drafted the United States Constitution in 1787. This document established a federal system and provided a framework for the country's expansion. The Constitution also outlined the process for admitting new states into the Union. The first significant expansion occurred in 1803 with the Louisiana Purchase. President Thomas Jefferson acquired a vast territory from France, doubling the size of the United States overnight. This acquisition opened up opportunities for westward expansion as pioneers ventured into the newly acquired lands. In the early 19th century, the United States embarked on a period of territorial expansion, driven by the belief in something called Manifest Destiny. The idea that it was the nation's destiny to expand from coast to coast. This expansion led to the acquisition of Florida from Spain in 1819, the annexation of Texas in 1845, the Mexican-American War resulting in the acquisition of vast territories including California, Arizona, New Mexico and parts of Colorado, Nevada and Utah. The discovery of gold in California accelerated settlement, leading to the establishment of new territories and eventual statehood for California in 1850. During the mid-19th century, the United States also expanded its territory through diplomacy and purchase. The Oregon Treaty of 1846 resolved a long-standing dispute with Britain, securing the Pacific Northwest for the United States. And the Gadsden Purchase of 1853 added a strip of land in present-day Arizona and New Mexico, further solidifying the country's southern borders. In the late 19th century and early 20th centuries, the United States acquired overseas territories, expanding its influence beyond the mainland. The Spanish-American War of 1898 resulted in the acquisition of Puerto Rico, Guam and the Philippines. Additionally, the United States purchased Alaska from Russia in 1867 adding vast territories to the northwest. But how about Hawaii? Hawaii became an official state on August 21st, 1959, the 50th and most recent state to be admitted to the Union. Alaska had actually become a state eight months earlier, and before that the most recent states were admitted in 1912. But Hawaii is not the most obvious candidate to be a state. Like Alaska, it's not part of the contiguous United States. In fact, it's not really even in the American continent. Hawaii is a chain of volcanic islands in the Pacific Ocean. It is 2,000 miles or about 3,200 kilometers from the coast of the contiguous US. While politically North American, Hawaii is part of the Oceania region. It is geographically far from most other major population centres. In fact, at the time of the foundation of the United States, Hawaii 
had never been visited by any European explorers, let alone any American. It was an independent kingdom with a royal family and unique culture. So how did these islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean become part of the United States? For centuries, the Hawaiian Islands were home to a vibrant Polynesian culture. If you listen to my episode on who discovered the Americas, you will know a little about the Polynesian explorers. The islands were ruled by a line of powerful monarchs who governed over the society. Native Hawaiians developed a unique language, customs and traditions. In the late 18th century, European explorers, most famously Captain James Cook, who was later killed by Hawaiians, made contact with the Hawaiian Islands. This was the beginning of increased foreign influence in the islands. Western traders, missionaries and whalers arrived, introducing new technologies, beliefs and diseases to the islands. Kim Kamehameha, the great perhaps the most influential leader in the island's history, successfully united the Hawaiian Islands under his rule in 1810. However, the arrival of foreign influences also brought political and economic changes to the islands. As these foreigners realised that Hawaii was a great place to grow sugar and create ports. By the mid-19th century, the United States sought to establish a stronger presence in the Pacific region. American sugar plantation owners began to acquire land and establish commercial enterprises in Hawaii. The United States signed a Treaty of Friendship, Commerce and Navigation with Hawaii in 1826, marking the beginning of formal diplomatic relations. As more treaties were signed and more Americans moved to the islands, a powerful class of white American sugar plantation owners grew. At the same time, Hawaii's economy became increasingly tied to the US economy. In 1887, this group of American businessmen, backed by the presence of American warships, forced King Kalakaua to sign the Bayonet Constitution. This constitution limited the monarch's power and granted more authority to foreign residents, particularly those of American descent. The right to vote, for example, was now only available for the island's white population and not the native islanders. This event signalled a significant shift in the balance of power and set the stage for future political developments. In 1891, Queen Lili Uakalani ascended to the throne after the death of her brother, King Kalakaua. She sought to restore power to the monarchy and the native Hawaiians, challenging the influence of foreign interests. However, her attempts to create a new constitution faced opposition from the sugar plantation owners, who feared the loss of their privileged status. In 1893, a group of American planters and businessmen, supported by elements of the United States military, staged a coup d'etat against Queen Lili Uokalani. This event, known as the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom, led to the establishment of a provisional government led by Sanford B. Dole. The United States recognised this government, but President Grover Cleveland expressed concerns about the legitimacy of the coup and called for the restoration of the Queen. Despite President Cleveland's efforts, the provisional government refused to step down. The subsequent years witnessed political negotiations and debates in both Hawaii and the United States. Hawaii was seen as a valuable gateway to Asia for the US giving them a convenient place for military and trade ships to stop over. However, there were a lot of concerns from the US that the annexation of Hawaii could have actually been illegal, as the internationally recognised independent country was basically overthrown by American sugar plantation owners. And other Americans were worried about the island's majority Polynesian and Asian population then becoming US citizens. Finally, in 1898, during the administration of President William McKinley, the United States formally annexed Hawaii, making it a territory of the United States. Not a state yet, but
for the territory. This was during the Spanish-American War, in which the government realised Hawaii's usefulness as a military base while fighting in the Philippines. Following annexation, Hawaii became a US territory, subject to American governance. Almost immediately, the new leaders of Hawaii were suggesting that the islands could apply to become a state. In the early 20th century, Hawaii experienced significant demographic changes. Immigrants from various countries, such as Japan, the Philippines, China and Portugal, arrived to work in Hawaii's plantations and labour industries. These immigrant communities brought their cultures and traditions, changing the island. The economic growth of Hawaii was prim primarily driven by sugarcane and the pineapple industries. Plantations owned by American corporations dominated the economy, employing a large portion of the population. However, labour disputes and working conditions led to social tensions, with workers advocating for fair treatment and improved rights. In 1919, the first Bill for Hawaiian Statehood was introduced to the US Congress, but it quickly failed. Hawaiian residents, despite technically being Americans, were not able to vote for president or their governor and lacked funding from the American government. World War II played a pivotal role in Hawaii's journey to statehood. The attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941 put Hawaii at the forefront of the war, bringing the United States directly into the conflict. The war effort transformed the islands into a strategic military hub, leading to increased federal investment in infrastructure, military and economics. The experiences of the war fostered a sense of unity and patriotism among the people of Hawaii, strengthening their ties to the United States. After the war, the veterans who had served in the Pacific returned to Hawaii, becoming advocates for statehood and contributing to the island's political landscape. By the 1940s, most Hawaiians actively wanted to be a state, and five bills were introduced to Congress asking for statehood in the years after World War II. In 1959, Hawaii finally achieved a significant milestone by becoming the 50th state of the United States. The overwhelming majority of Hawaii's residents voted in favour of statehood, demonstrating a desire for full integration into the United States. So that is Hawaii's story of becoming a state its journey from an illegal coup by plantation owners to becoming a US territory to eventual statehood. But what about Hawaii today? Its economy has completely changed. The last fruit companies and growers moved to cheaper countries and regions, and now tourism has largely become the major industry. However, tourism has long been a double-edged sword for Hawaii. On the one hand, it fuels the economy, providing jobs and revenue. The picturesque landscapes, beautiful beaches and warm climate attract millions of visitors each year. On the other hand, the rapid growth of tourism has raised concerns about its impact on the environment, local communities and Hawaiian culture. Balancing the economic benefits with sustainable practices and preserving the authenticity of the islands remains an ongoing challenge. Issues surrounding Hawaiian land and sovereignty continue to be significant. The history of land ownership in Hawaii is complex, involving a mix of private, government and native Hawaiian land. Native Hawaiians have advocated for the protection and return of ancestral lands asserting their rights and connection to the land. In recent years, Hawaii has seen a rise in billionaires and mega-rich Americans purchasing significant amounts of territory. For example, Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook and Meta, has bought a massive amount of land. This has raised concerns about housing affordability, local control and the impact on Hawaiian communities. Rising real estate prices make it difficult for locals to find affordable housing, and thousands of Hawaiians are having to leave the islands and move to cheaper states because it's too expensive to live in Hawaii. Preserving and revitalising native Hawaiian culture is also a priority for many in Hawaii. 
Native Hawaiians struggle to maintain their language and traditions and customs in the face of outside influence. Cultural practices such as hula, language revitalization efforts, and the continuation of traditional knowledge are integral to preserving the unique identity of Hawaii. The idea of Hawaiian independence remains a topic of discussion and debate. Some native Hawaiians and activists argue for self-determination and the restoration of the Hawaiian kingdom, which was overthrown in 1893. Many other Hawaiians believe that the United States should compensate the native population, who had their land illegally taken over 100 years ago. While it is in unlikely, maybe even impossible, that Hawaii will ever become a kingdom again, there are strong arguments that the island's land and culture should be protected, just as many Native American tribes on the mainland have. In 1993, the US government formally apologised for overthrowing the monarchy and acknowledged that the Hawaiian people's land was taken without permission. But importantly, it offered no compensation, reparations or return of land. Hawaii's journey from a Polynesian kingdom has been long, controversial and fascinating. And we still don't know what the future may hold. So here is today's final thought. From the early Polynesian settlers, to the establishment of an independent kingdom, to the overthrow of the monarchy, annexation by the US and eventually becoming an official state. Hawaii has had an eventful history. Hopefully today you now understand why and how Hawaii became part of the United States of America. Will Hawaii stay as a state? Yes. Should native Hawaiians be compensated for the loss of their lands? I would also say yes. Their ancestors had no choice in the matter. They, their country was basically stolen by American businessmen and then the United States of America. And today, the islands are dominated by billionaires buying up massive amounts of land and thousands of Hawaiians are being forced to move or leave as they can no longer afford to live there. This is something that may resonate with many of you because cities and countries all around the world have similar issues, even myself. I can't and most of my friends cannot afford to live in the town I grew up in as house prices are far too expensive for anyone in the beginning of their careers. But what do you think? What did you think about this topic? Have you ever visited Hawaii? Have you ever thought about why Hawaii is part of the USA? Uh, quite often while living in Japan I would ask people uh, have you visited America or have you visited the USA and people would say no but I've been to Hawaii or no but I've been to Guam right but both Guam and the and Hawaii are parts of the United States Hawaii is a legally a state while Guam is an overseas territory but many people forget these are both parts of the United States so uh, have you ever thought about these issues before and would you like me to do episodes on, I guess, other states, other parts of the USA? Um, Alaska is an obvious candidate. It was bought um, from Russia, but also places like uh, Texas, right? And the Louisiana Purchase and California, uh, which used to be part of Mexico. These are really interesting topics as well. And there's also an interesting discussion about should America have more states Right? Should there be a 51st state? Uh, because there are places like Guam, like Puerto Rico, like the US Virgin Islands, like American Samoa, which are parts of the USA, territories of the USA, but don't have any legal rights as states because they're not states. But what do you think? Uh, let me know and, and leave a comment. You can leave comments on Spotify, leave comments on the Thinking in English blog, uh, reach out to me on Instagram, of course. Um, and if you want to support the podcast, I'd really appreciate it. And you'd also be helping yourself, right? We have conversation clubs six times a week. You can join by clicking the link in the description for Patreon. And there's currently a seven-day free trial as well. Uh, and yeah, thank you all for listening. I hope you have a great 
day and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.